It's time for Coffee with Catalyst. Here's your host, Rich Ezzo. Welcome, everyone, to another edition of Coffee with Catalyst. Today, we're speaking with Angela Davis. Angela works here at Catalyst as a digital analyst, and she's also one of the contributing authors to our most recent ebook, which is E-commerce SEO Strategies, Mastering the Art of Online Retail. So, Angela, tell us, um, what are some of the most recent trends happening in the e-commerce space right now? Sure. Um, I'd say that some of the most recent trends are that um, the consumer path to purchase has gotten a lot more complex over the past several years. Um, consumers are now able to research products online, comparison shop, they can read reviews, watch demo videos. The buzzword you hear a lot now is omni-channel mm -hmm. um, consumer yeah. experiences. Um, marketers tend to think of uh, you know consumer experiences you know siloed within their channels, very specific. So if it's a web experience or an online or in-store experience, or whether they're talking to the the brand manager, you know, via social media. And consumers uh, don't think like marketers do. We don't, you know, consumers don't think in those silos. Mm -hmm. They just think of your brand versus the other brand and whether okay. they, they've had a good experience with your brand or not. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, uh, consumers are expecting a consistent experience across all of those channels um, and the ability to shop anywhere, anytime. What about in the social sphere? What, what advice do you have there? I think that um, marketers really need to take a step back and kind of put their consumer hat on for a minute um, and think about, you know, the consumer's journey across all these various platforms um, and make sure that they're connecting with those consumers in a meaningful way, you know, across all those various touch points. I don't think that a lot of brands understand the value of just kind of owning their brand presence and owning their brand name across all these platforms, you know. Um, there's millions of users on all these platforms every day and they're looking for your brand and if you're not there with an official brand presence, someone else might step in and create a fan page or, or a a slanderous page, uh, you know, <laughs> imitating your brand, and, and you need to be there and make sure that you're owning your brand messaging and, and connecting with your consumers where they are. Yeah. Um, you know, Pinterest, Google, uh, Google Plus, YouTube, um, these sites are all really great for kind of showing off products, especially um, various images of them, uh, videos of them being used in, in creative, cool ways. Um, and, and these assets can actually rank in the search engines. So not only would you be dominating your branded search results, but you're also dominating your non branded search results. And, and and kind of connecting with those consumers before they have necessarily made their brand decision. Mm. Okay. And uh, it's finally the year of mobile. We've been <laughs> waiting and talking <laughs> about it's here, isn't it? So our mobile has become very real, very big. The usage is just increasing constantly. What about in e-commerce? What do you see there? Um, again, I think it's it's about that consistent um, experience across whatever channel you know your consumers are on. So whether they're on their desktop or their mobile device, you know they need to find the information on your site. Um, I can't tell you how frustrating it is for me as a user. You know, I go onto a mobile site. Uh, it's supposed to be mobile friendly, um, and it's completely lacking the content from the desktop site that I saw earlier. Or you know, I can't access the things that I saved in my shopping cart um, because it's a an, it's an inconsistent mm. experience uh, mm. across the two platforms. Um, so I think that that's something that a lot of e-commerce sites still need to work on. Google even stands by that consistency. Uh, Google now officially recommends um, responsive design websites, um, which I know is really intimidating to people. And, you know, they don't want to do what Google says at the drop of a hat, but it really does make sense um, to sort of plan um, for the future of your website to maybe look at responsive design because um, it's going to save you money on website um, edits and, and maintenance. It's going to save you um, time and frustration with your analytics and tracking. Um, and I think it's just going to help um, solidify that consistent user experience um, okay. and just make the job easier. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, last piece, um, e-retail. So obviously we're covering some ground here. We've got social, mobile. What about the e-retail space? What, what should marketers be doing there? I think, uh, especially with uh, consumer packaged good brands, um, there's a lot of brands that um, it's not worth it for them to sell on their own website. You know, mm -hmm. the, the cost of the goods is just a, too low of a price point. Um, so a lot of them will have a nice website that has all the product information, but then when you actually go to make the purchase, they're um, driving traffic towards these e-retailers like Amazon or, or CVS. And I think it's important to note that Amazon had, I think, over 61 billion sales um, in 2012. So they are 
basically like the Google <laughs> of, <laughs> of your retailers. Yeah. Um, and it's important for you to kind of own your presence on Amazon as well. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't starting on your brand website, no matter how nice you make it. They're starting on their Amazon site because they have, you know, the Prime membership with the free shipping and whatever. So they're already on Amazon. So you have to make sure that you're kind of owning your presence on Amazon. And I see a lot of um, products um, and product pages with lousy pictures, really thin, bad descriptions, um, you know, and, and you're not ranking for your own products. These, like, third-party resellers that, you know, you don't control are making more money off of your products than you are <laughs> using <laughs> these third-party sites. Good. All right. So you ready to make us laugh? Oh, no. <laughs> it's time for... Coffee with Catalyst Comedy Corner. All right, Angela. So it's joke time. Did you come prepared? Yes, actually, I did. Um, I knew you were going to do this to me, so <laughs> I actually went on my Facebook page and I asked my friends for some suggestions really? for a joke for you. Wow. Yes. Uh, crowdsourcing at its finest. There you go. Social media works. <laughs> um, That's what you preach. Though. So, so <laughs> yes. Uh, so the joke I chose is actually uh, from a coworker of, uh, of ours, uh, Kate Curtis. Thanks, Kate. Um, it's an industry-specific joke, so I thought it would be really great for to, to share. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That is impressive. Yes, you're right. <laughs> what do you call the number of times an SEO specialist can jump on a trampoline. It's really an SEO joke, I'm impressed. Um, I haven't any idea. Their bounce rate. <laughs> <laughs> well, the fact that it's an SEO joke, I give you a thumbs up for that at least. Uh, not bad, not bad at all. Um, thanks, Angela. I really appreciate you being here today, and thank you, everyone. We hope to see you next time. Join us next time for another edition of Coffee with Catalyst, right here at CatalystSearchMarketing.com.